So my name is uh, Serge Garcia, and uh, until uh, a few months ago, I was the director of the uh, Fisheries Resources and Management Division of FAO. I'm not retired, but as you can see, I'm still interested by fishery matters, so that's the reason why I came at this conference, and I was invited to come at this conference. Uh, FAO is an organization that deals with food and agriculture, so its main mandate is food. And within FAO, there is a small department, which is a fisheries department, that deals with uh, inland fisheries, marine fisheries, high seas fisheries, deep sea fisheries, and also aquaculture in all its forms. And uh, one of the main concern or motivation of FAO, of course, is that uh, the demand for food is increasing everywhere. The population of the world is growing, and more people means more people to feed with, with fish. And uh, also development is increasing in many countries. And what happens is when people get richer, they eat even more fish than the poor people do. So altogether, this means that uh, we expect that within uh, 20 years, we will need something like 180 million tons of fish to feed all of these people. And at the moment, we are below that by about 30 million tons or so. So we have a problem, is how to produce there's millions of tons, because if we don't have enough fish, what will happen is the poor people won't have any. So the problem is to produce enough so that the rich can have what they can pay for and the poor can also have some fish with the amount of money they can uh, save. And it's a bit of a problem because the wild fisheries are at their maximum limit and beyond. The wild fisheries are producing a bit less than 100 million tons and they will never produce more. So for FAO, the response is in aquaculture. Only aquaculture can cope with the, the gap that we have between what can be produced and what the people would like to consume. There seems to be no doubt that aquaculture will manage to produce. Uh, the technology is there. There is still a lot to learn about fish. So nobody seems to be really concerned. But there are constraints, which, is, which are that uh, we are short of land, clean land. To grow fish, you need very clean land with clean water. And there is a shortage of clean land. There is a shortage of... Uh, water. Uh, on the seashore, uh, you have a lot of pollution problems with aquaculture, or you might have uh, phenomena like uh, destruction of mangroves. Or things like that. So you have competition between the space needed for aquaculture and the space needed for uh, coastal uh, dwelling or for coastal industries or ports or marinas and so on. So there is a big space management problem with aquaculture. Um, of course, there is a lot of open sea available in which there is less competition and more clear water, but that's a te technological challenge, is to be able to grow fish despite of gales and, and hurricanes and, and things like that, either underwater or there's various technologies developing. So we are looking forward to, to see that. Our priority really in FAO has always been freshwater aquaculture, because in freshwater you produce fish that they are herbivores. They eat grass, they eat algae, they eat plants, and therefore we use solar energy to produce as food. And we think that's where the priority should be, essentially, because when we start growing fish in the ocean, usually you have to feed them with fish. Fish eat fish. And one can easily see that there will be a point where either the fish will be fed to the fish or the fish will be fed to the people. And so, fortunately, uh, obviously, for, for FAO, the point is to produce fish that are grown from solar energy and not fish that are grown for, from fish meat. But unfortunately... The fish grown in the ocean are of very high commercial value, and it is a sort of fish that rich people want and affluent societies want. So we don't believe that this can disappear that easily, but this is one of our um, problems. The two problems that FAO tries to face is, on the one hand, correct fisheries, so that the fairly widespread overfishing that we have everywhere can be corrected. And there are lots of programs ongoing to try to, to do that in various ways. And the second problem is to accompany the development of aquaculture to make sure that it is uh, environmentally friendly and, and limiting the damage as far as possible. And that conference is one of the places where those problems are debated. Uh, uh, we have a lot of sessions that deal with that, the environmental impact, the integrated management within the coastal zone, the interactions between capture fisheries and, and aquaculture and so on are some of the issues which are discussed uh, here. Of course, one thing we tend to forget, usually when people talk about the importance of fisheries, we count the number of fishermen and canoes and so on. And there is one thing we tend to forget to count, which is the number of people that eat fish. And so every consumer around the world that eats fish is, should be concerned by, by the future of fisheries and of aquaculture, because 
the availability of fish depends on that, and, and fish are a very important type of food for, for its um, uh, properties, nutritive properties. And uh, the price of fish is of concern to everybody, the availability and so on. So it, it, it looks like a problem for small coastal communities, but in reality it's a problem for the citizen of the world. If you eat fish, you should be concerned, I guess. <laughs>